Hey guys, this will be Communications, and welcome to a brand new DVD, Blu-ray, uh, also actually Laserdisc and CED update. Um, actually, this is something that I wasn't planning on doing, but I got some stuff in the mail, and I'm still waiting for a package. There'll be an unboxing video later. I know a friend of mine, is, uh, a good friend of mine, is sending me something in the mail I haven't gotten yet. But I will do an unboxing video when I do get it. But anyway, I just want to say right off the bat, happy Halloween to everybody out there um, who's watching this video. And before I actually show you this, the new stuff, well, there's a few old stuff I want to show you. And in particular, some old stuff that, well, let's just say they had something new added to it, which is really, really cool. If you had already, if you checked out my Tales from the Crypt, um, review my review of episode one of the man who was death you would have already heard my story of how I went and saw the monster squad in the theater at the Hollywood theater here over in Portland Oregon and I saw it in 35 millimeter and so and the director Fred Decker was also in attendance so I not only got to you know ask him a few ask him a few questions I also got to actually shake his hand uh, and I also, he graciously autographed two of my laser discs. So first off, this is my Monster Squad laser disc, which he autographed. That's Fred Decker's signature on my laser disc of the Monster Squad. Now, which is just awesome. And um, here's Fred Decker's. He also signed my Night of the Creeps laser disc. So. Trying to get that glare to go away. Go away, glare! <laughs> Fuck off, glare! I'm trying to get the glare to go away. There. Fred Decker. So Fred Decker signed both my laser discs of the Monster Squad and Night of the Creeps. And I thought I'd show those to you guys in this update because I think it's pretty cool. Um, also, might as well just tell you guys some fun stories about the, the screening. It was great. It was, I gotta be honest, it's the best time I had in the theater ever it was a very special night a very special experience uh, something I will never forget uh, it's something that I will always cherish the opportunity the rare opportunity to see one of my all-time favorite films in the theater the way it was originally seen in 1987 with an actual film print it was just a, such a unique wonderful grand experience that I really wish a lot of my friends were able to experience too Getting to meet the director was the icing on the cake. Uh, the, the question I asked him during the Q&A was I asked him, I was watching the film again, The Monster Squad, when Sean stabs Dracula in the chest at the, at the end of the movie with a stake, it looks like Sean, you look closely at his lips, it looks like he says something. and, and But it's dubbed out. So I asked Fred, I asked Fred Decker, like, do you know what Sean actually said? And Fred, Fred had this fun response. He was all like, "Well, uh, I wish I had something witty to say, but I, I really don't know. I really don't know what he said. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know." And I, I thought that was pretty funny because, you know, Fred Decker is just a very humble, very nice guy. It was really a great, real treat to meet him and to hear him talk about uh, the Monster Squad. Somebody asked a question about how were you able to get all these Universal monsters in this movie. And he said that well, it was how you know how how was it, how, you know how difficult was it to deal with the copyrights and all of that. And Fred said that it wasn't difficult at all. He said that he he went up to Universal and he said, "Hey, you know, I got an idea. Let's bring back the Universal monsters." And the studio heads at Universal were all like, "Oh, those those move black and white movies on TV." And Fred Decker's like, yeah, yeah, the, the Universal Monsters, the classics, the Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Dracula, the Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon, yeah. And he, and Fred said that the the Universal heads at Unifuckle, they were Unifuckle way back in 1987. It's not a new thing. And they were all like, oh, really? Those old movies? We don't care about those movies. What's new? What's hip? <laughs> and so Fred Decker pretty much said that he had no problem at all with the securing the rights for the for the uh, 
for the monster squad for using the for using the the universal monsters. In fact, he he mentioned that something I thought was interesting that Frankenstein and Dracula are in the public domain, so you can do anything with those characters. And the only they didn't really call the creature well, they called the creature from Black Lagoon the creature in the film, but they labeled him the Gill Man in the credits. But he really he just he said that Universal didn't care. Universal didn't really didn't give a shit about the copyright for the Universal Monsters. Of course, now they care because they're trying to do their own sort of Marvel, uh, you know, universe type cinematic universe thing with the with the monsters. But yeah, I think that's pretty pretty uh, pretty interesting. And then when, after the Q and A, he actually you know stayed for autographs and things like that. And I asked him another question. I'm at, I asked him about RoboCop three. And I asked him, you know, was it originally R-rated? Was your screenplay originally R-rated? Like I've heard some rumors I've read about online that it was. And that you, originally you, you were intended to have a more harder-edged uh, film. Uh, but then Orion was like, hey, last minute we want PG-13. Well, actually it's not the case. Uh, straight from the lips of Fred Decker. Fred Decker said that it was always intended to be PG-13 from the beginning. And even he admits that it could have been a lot, a little more violent. That would have helped it. So I thought that was pretty cool. It was wonderful to meet Fred Decker. Uh, you know, he's still. I feel. I still think, despite RoboCop, RoboCop three, I still think he's one of the best horror. You know, horror writers out there, directors as well. Um, Night of the Crew and Monster Squad are two of their best films of the genre, and you know. I'm actually curious to see what he'll he'll uh, he'll do for the new Predator film. I know I shouldn't be super excited, and I'm not. I, I'm going to be a little bit apprehensive about it because of you know Fox, 20th Century Fuckface. But I want to support Fred Decker, and he's working on trying to get a couple pilots for Netflix. I think some Netflix TV show TV shows. So hopefully those will get picked up, so we can continue to get work because the guy deserves it. Fred Decker's just he's great. So anyway, that's uh, that's that. Now I want to show you guys some. Two, some of these are new, but the rest of the about three of these are not. Three of these are are ones I've already had. So um, just wanted to show you these in HD, which I never actually did before. This is a CED. This is a SpectraVision SelectaVision electric. You know, it's a capacitance electronic disc. And this is, of course, John Carpenter's The Fog, which maybe sometime later, if I'm feeling up to it, I might, I might just end up showing you some of my horror laser discs, because I think they're really cool. But, you know, we'll see. But The Fog, I couldn't pass this up. This is really, I think this is really cool. And this is something I got a while back. And um, capacitance electronic discs were made by RCA, as you can see. RCA and capacitance electronic discs they are they're an outdated form of you know watching movies and so forth they're kind of like laser discs but not really they're completely different in fact what it is I don't have the player but eventually I want it I really do want the player and what happens is you point you take the whole electronic disc you take this whole big plastic hunk of case here and you stick it in the player you just stick it in there, like like. Imagine my mouth is the flare. You just, you know, you just stick it right in there, and then the flare pulls this thing out, and it plays the whatever film thing that record whatever film thing is in here. I'm not an expert on how it works, but I, I still think these are pretty cool, and I'll collect these if I find them for cheap, because this is cheap, because a while back, and it's a fog. I mean, that's really good. I think that's really cool. So, that's John Carpenter's The Fog. Now, I do have another one. Another John Carpenter flick. Escape from New York. Which is another really cool, I think, capacitance electronic disc. So, these are these have really cool artwork. Um, kind of like laser discs, but, you know, a little bit more... It's it's almost... It, they definitely do take up a lot of space, but I, I, I still think they're really cool. And I will definitely collect more if I, I see them. But only specific titles, though, as a collector. There's some I just... Unless I get them, like, in a lot or something. But, um... And I hope some of these work. 
because when I eventually do end up getting a player, I hope these eventually work. But, you know, either way, they're really cool. I'll still keep them for their cases. And here are the, before I show you the two new ones that I got, because I couldn't believe I found some at the thrift store, my old hangout spot. Obviously, this one is not going to work because I think it's broken. Oh, here it is. No, I pulled it back up. It, it might work. Uh, whatever. This is one my mom got me, surprised me with. This needs a black hole. I didn't pay for this. My mom got it for me from a thrift store while she was out visiting some people. So I'll take it. Then I probably would have I would have picked this up too if I saw it somewhere else for cheap. So yeah, so and here are the two new ones that I picked up. I, I I even have this I already have this movie on DVD, but I think this is really cool. Firstborn. Firstborn Capacitance Electronic Disc. I, I really like this movie. Christopher Collette and Peter Weller. It's a very underrated movie. And now I have the C E D of Firstborn. And uh, it was only a dollar. So I'll take that. And um and the second one I got here is the French Connection. Great Gene Hackman movie. This is this this is in pretty decent quality for a CED. And yeah, the French Connection. It's a great movie. There's only one other one I was thinking about getting at the first store, and it was uh, Don't Look Now, but it was really with uh you know um Donald Sutherland but it was just it was just covered in marker and stuff it was in really bad shape so I didn't I didn't go for it. So anyway now I'm gonna show you guys a few VHS tapes I got from thrift stores recently. This is a movie called A Real American Hero which is based on the true story of Buford Pusser stars Brian Dennehy and this is a movie that uh it's more closely based on the true story than Walking Tall. Walking Tall which with Joe Don Baker which was the original, which was like a movie came out before this. This came out in like the 80s, I think. It was like it was like a TV movie or something. But a real American hero. I didn't have this one, so I thought I'd pick it up. It was cheap. Um, medieval film nobody really talks about called Lionheart. I have this on Laserdisc as well, but my, you know, might as well for a dollar pick it up on VHS, starring Eric Stoltz and Gabriel Byrne. I also have this on DVD. <laughs> I know, surprisingly, huh? But I'm a collector. And I completely forgot about how, that I had this on DVD until I bought the VHS. So it was like one of those too late, you know, too little, too late things. But I'm a collector, so, you know, I'll take the, the VHS of Lionheart. And no, it's not. When you think of Lionheart, the last thing you think of is this movie. You usually think of Jean-Claude Van Damme. You think of Lionheart, but there's more than one Lionheart movie. And this is this is actually came before the Jean Claude Van Damme movie. This is a late '80s film. So we got Lionheart. Then I picked up this movie, which I've been curious about, and never seen. It's called Tyson. It's an HBO original movie uh, based on the story of Mike Tyson, starring Michael J. White as Mike Tyson, and uh, it also has Paul Winfield. Uh, George C. Scott, directed by Uli Ad Adele, based on the book Fire and Fear, by Jose Torres. And I know it's on DVD, but I've heard some really good things about this, so I definitely, you know, pick. Uh, I decided, you know, for a dollar, why not pick it up? Tyson. And then for the VHS, I got a couple big box MGM UA, which I really love these doesn't matter if I'm the movie isn't even that great to me just for collectors purposes I'll, I'll pick these up any day of the week this is a uh, fool for love a movie I've never heard of this is a Robert Altman film uh, it stars Sam Shepard and Kim Basinger I saw the trailer for it didn't really look like much but it's a big box case and it's like a dollar I'll take that any day of the week I really like these these are collectors items for me I really like these uh, MGM UA big box VHS and um, then I picked up this, Heaven's Gate, the uncut version. 
Big box. Mainly because it's the big box. This is the only reason why I picked this up is because it's the big box MGM UA. Uh, you know, they'd open up like this. That's the only reason why I picked this up because this movie infamously uh, uh, bad or infamously bad for the film industry or yeah Michael Camino would just say he's a he's a nut job at least when it came to being on the set of this film but you know I'll, I'll, ta I'll take it I'll, I'll take Heaven's Gate and the you know two pack collector's edition you know the the two pack uh, you know, uh, big box VHS. So yeah, so that that's it for the VHS, which recently actually did some clearing out of some of my old VHS tapes. Um, I'm ready to get rid of them, some of them, because I have you know getting rid of ones that I already have on DVD and so forth. So there's that. And now here we come to two uh, new Blu-rays that I picked that I just got in the mail today uh, from Screen Factory. The Dark Half. Which I'm going to open right now. Oh, well, okay. It looks like it got damaged in shipping or something. Cheap ass cases. Look. Look at that. The disc is fine, probably, but look at that. Cheap ass fucking cases right here. What you, that's what happens when you use cheap fucking plastic. The case gets broken. It almost doesn't even look like the case broke. It looks like it just it got shipped that way. It, look, it didn't look like it shit. It got packaged this way. That's insane. I've never seen this before. This this was covered to this. Okay, so and there's not a piece that's missing. There's not a piece that fell out anywhere. So this case was packaged with a busted case. This Blu-ray was packaged with a busted case. Like who is who is responsible for packaging this kind of stuff? I mean, th this is fine. I'm looking at it right here. There's nothing broken on Monkey Shines. But I I know I'm just kind of like a little thing, but still, I mean, it's surprising like you buy you pay 20 something bucks for Blu-ray and then you get a busted case and it doesn't make any sense and it looks like it was just they just said fuck it we'll just keep the but they'll just package it anyway despite a fucking busted case has anybody else had this type of you know problem when they've gotten Blu-rays in the mail this is the first time I've ever had anything like this it works the Blu-ray is fine but, you know, as you can see, the Blu-ray is fine. The Blu-ray doesn't have any scratches or anything, but just the busted case is kind of hard to ignore. But anyway, um, this is the dark half. I think this is a very underrated George A. Romero film and a Stephen King movie. I really like this. Timothy Hutton's great in this. I'm really glad to have this on Blu-ray. In high definition quality, because the, first, the, the only other way you could get it was on DVD, and it was in full screen. So it's really nice to get this in high definition with features. Good amount of features. Um, you got audio commentary with director George R. George R. Romero. The Sparrows of Flying Again, The Making of the Dark Half, with all new an all new retrospective with George A. Romero, special effect effects special makeup effects creators Everett Morrell and John Vol Volichich. Visual effects supervisor Kevin Kuchaver, actor Robert Joy, editor Rod Pascal Buba, and more. Um, it would be nice to hear from Timothy Hutton, but I don't know if he'll talk about it. We'll see. Um, deleted scenes, behind-the-scenes footage, a vintage electronic press kit. Wow, they have the vintage electronic press kit on here. Uh, but the Ghostbusters 2 Blu-ray couldn't have the electronic press kit from that on their Blu-ray, which I still haven't got. I haven't gotten the Ghostbusters 1 and 2 Blu-ray set as soon as I found out that not all the deleted scenes are on it. There's only the stuff with Lewis and maybe a couple of other stuff. Lewis and Slime, you know, trying to capture Slimer. But there's none of the scenes where that you know, there's no, that scene where Ray gets possessed by Vigo and, and almost cr and crashes the is trying to kill the Ghostbusters and he's going crazy behind the wheel of the Ectomobile. That's not on there, and I, that that's the one I was looking forward to the most. And that's not on there. And and the and the little tiny uh, roundtable interview with Dan Aykroyd and Ivan Reitman is like 16 minutes. So it, it's 
I, that's that that's a set that's way down my list of priorities. So, but I'm I yeah that's why I got this you know over that. But the dark half's got the a vintage electronic press kit. It's got the theatrical trailer, TV spot, storyboards. So yeah, fan of this movie, definitely pick this up. Even if you're not, it's still a great Screen Factory Blu-ray because it's got is jammed with features and yeah, the dark half. You know, busted case and all. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, so I got that one, and then I also got another George Romero horror flick, another underrated one, Monkey Shines, which I have on DVD, but now I have it on Blu-ray, and I'm going to sell back the DVD, so see if I can get a little extra, get something from buybacks for it. If I can't get that much for it, I'll probably try to sell it online, if I can get it more, more for it. I might try to see what if I can get more for it online right at the bat anyway. Um, from Amazon or something. But here's Monkey Shines. No busted case. <laughs> Monkey Shines. And, uh, this has a decent, this is, that's the cover. It has a reversible cover. With that fucking terrifying, well, it's like interesting. It almost looks like it, it's, it's, no, 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 no. It's still that scary ass fucking monkey. Right here. Fucking monkey and scares the shit out of me, but it's not that particular cover that scares me the most. It's this fucking one. And then I'm gonna reverse it because I'm a glutton for. <laughs> this is the cover that scared the shit out of me as a kid. It still, it still kind of scares me. So I remember when I saw this cover like at a Hollywood video or something in the horror section, it just stuck with me. This cover. This 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 cover art for the VHS of Monkey Shines just scared the shit out of me. And then ever since I've seen like these clapping monkeys since then, like I I hate clapping monkeys. But just just repositioning the case, the slip case here. So, but yeah, all, all yeah, there we go. Scared the shit out of me some more. Now that I have it though, I'm I'm not really that scared of it anymore. Really, I gotta be honest. It's like I'm not super scared of this anymore. It's creepy looking, but um, I'm not as scared of it anymore because this is, I think it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, this has a commentary, audio commentary of Georgie Romero. It has an experiment in fear, the making of Monkey Shines, an all new retrospective with Georgie Romero. Jason Begg, the star of the film, actually talks about it. Cool. Uh, Kate McNeil. Uh, executive producer Peter Grunwald, special makeup effects creator Tom Savini, special makeup effects assistants Greg Nicotero and Everett Burrell, editor Pasquale Buba, and more. It also has an alternate ending, deleted scenes, behind the scenes footage, vintage electronic press kit, and a theatrical trailer, as well as a TV spot. So this is loaded with features as well. And it's not even called a collector's edition, but it might as well be because it's got a good amount of features on it. So that's. The Dark Half from Screen Factory. And this is Monkey Shines from Screen Factory. And the only other uh, uh, Blu rays I really would like to get my hands on from Screen Factory now are I'd like to someday get The Fog. Uh, I'd like to someday um, get The Fun House. Um, I'd like to get the Halloween box set, the limited collector's edition, you know, with the bonus disc and all of that. And I like to pick up dolls, but um, those will be a little bit later down the road because the Halloween box set is, is low on my totem pole of wants. What I really the, the the high on my totem pole of wants in terms of Blu-rays or DVDs uh, for next month uh, with my um, with my uh, funding is uh, Super Mario Brothers, the Blu-ray from Second Sight with features, and the Blu-ray looks like the best it's ever looked. Uh, the 1993 film, which I love. I don't care what people say. I love Super Mario Brothers. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Get off the floor. Da -da 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 -da. I, I love that. I love that movie. Um, I love to get that. I want to get that Blu-ray. And I also would like to get uh, the Arrow Video Blu-ray of the stuff, which I know they're selling selling it on Amazon for like 20 bucks, so it's affordable. And one of the more expensive Blu-rays I want to get my hands on as soon as possible is the Moontrap Blu-ray from all the films. And um, so those are the ones that are higher on the totem pole. Super Mario Brothers, Moon Trap, and the stuff. And speaking of Arrow Video, I did get this. So this I'll show this in another video. 
but I did get uh, the Arrow video release of. Is my cat really? Get, get out of here! <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't get to see my creep show shirt though, but fucking cat. Uh, anyway, furry fucker. Anyway, so getting back to um. Arrow video, I did also get from uh, Zavi.com. If you have a region free Blu ray player, I don't know if they still have this deal going on right now, but you can get a copy of the People Under the Stairs Arrow video Blu ray with the features and you know that Universal, you know, a bunch of fuckheads didn't give you in the United States uh, for like 14 bucks. And I got it for 14, I was like, 14 dollars is weight is an awesome deal, and I couldn't pass it up so. I have that wing uh, in the mail. It's 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 on its way over here. So when I get it, I'll I'll do a video about that. And so that's pretty much it. That's those are like those are like the. And I also would like to get the '60s Batman series on, on Blu-ray or DVD sometime, but it's a little ways down the road. But mainly, it's I want the Halloween box set. I like the but that's a little bit that's afterwards. Like the Halloween box set, you know that's cool. I'd like to get it, but I do have Halloween the Halloween film except for Halloween Five. So I don't really there's no super big priority on that, but I want I would I really would like to add um, Moon Trap, Super Mario Brothers, Blu-rays, and uh, the the blu you know also the Blu-ray of Dolls uh, before, from Screen Factory before I would go for the Halloween set and the, of course the Blu-ray of the stuff as well from Arrow Video. But anyway, but these were ones I really wanted. These were like. These were like definitely must-haves, and I'm glad I really have them. I have them now in my collection. So maybe you'll expect some reviews of these sometime soon, because I'm planning sometime on actually doing a big, long retrospective on this film, and and, and review the sequel. So I think I've done it before, but I'm going to do it again, because uh, I think I had to remove those videos for copyright issues or something because of clips. And I probably still might have clips, but I have like a TV spot or something. And uh, then I will I will revisit Creep Show three. I will sit through Creep Show three again because I'm also planning on doing a bunch of anthology reviews. Um, and the next review coming up will actually be a Tales from the Dark Side the movie because I think that ties in really well with what I'm doing with Tales. From, I just reviewed the first season of Tales from the Dark Side, so I think it'll be a good time to review that movie, which I really like. And then I'm going to, you know, review some more uh, anthologies, like the Tales of the Crypt and Vault of Horror films from the 70s. Um, I think I've reviewed Asylum already, but maybe I'll watch that one again and review it again, um, which is another Amicus anthology film. I'll review uh, t Tales from the Beyond the Grave, which I have on DVD. Um, I'll check out Necronomicon Book of the Dead, which I really like. Um, I'll, I'll check out and review Body Bags which I haven't seen in a long time. And I'll review all three VHS films. Yes, another rant on the first VHS, because I'm going to give it a second chance and see if it gets any better. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it's still a piece of shit. And also check out some more obscure anthologies, like Terragram. I think that's definitely an obscure one. And I think there's another one, which not Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. I'm not fucking watching that shit. Uh, it's another one. It's not Terragram. It's a different one. Escapes with Vincent Price. So there's there's a, a few anthology flicks I'm gonna check out, uh, as well as Trick or Treat. I'll check out check that one out too. The the one with uh, that Brian Singer did. So um or helped with. So yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of horror anthologies. There's also a few other ones I'm curious about that I downloaded on my on my hard drive. So I'll check those out too. So. Expect a bunch of horror anthology reviews coming up. Um, I was originally planning on doing franchises and stuff like that, but I think what I'm going to do sometime next month, while I'm in the middle of doing Tales from the Crypt reviews and, and, and horror anthology reviews, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video where I'm going to have an option for a certain... Because my friend Matt inspired me to do this, because he did this on his Facebook post, and I want to make a video about it asking you guys uh, what franchise you want me to review next, or what types of movies you want me to do. And I'll just give you right off the bat a few things that are rattling around in my head about uh, what kind of films, franchises that I want to tackle. Um, the Nightmare on Elm Street films, 
Those are ones that I really definitely do want to review. Um, Scream, because I've had a few requests for those films. Um, Phantasm, the Phantasm series. Uh, I'd like to do that sometime. And I'd also like to really do a, a Dario Argento month with nothing but Dario Argento movies. So that's the preliminary sort of... Um, uh, sorry, excuse me for my brain. Just <laughs> still trying to wake up. Uh, but uh, so yeah, that that's the preliminary uh ideas that I have for possible, you know, for the votes and whatever. But there might be some extra stuff I'll add. And if you have any ideas, please let me know, and I might add it to the video whenever I get around to doing it. But anyway, I got a few more, uh, a couple Blu-rays, uh, one more Blu-ray to show you, and a few more DVDs. And then that I will probably this will this is already a pretty long video, but I don't, but that'll be it. But how about one last Blu-ray, and it is of the Blob, the 1988 uh, remake. This is the Twilight Time Blu-ray release. I couldn't help myself. I had money, I had the money for it, so I decided to pick it up. It looks fantastic. It sounds great. Uh, the one problem I might have is the audio commentary. It's just a commentary track. I haven't tried anything else. But it seems like to me, whenever you turn on the audio commentary track, you, you the sound from the film is completely muted. So you're just watching the film muted with the audio com commentary track, which I don't think, I think that loses the experience when you're watching a uh, commentary because it helps for you to actually hear and listen to what the guys are talking about. So uh, that's kind of a mistake. So maybe I'll fix it, figure out if there's a way to fix it. Um, not really the best cover. I gotta be honest. I definitely do like my my uh, DVD, you know, VHS DVD cover a lot more than this. This is kind of lame. And um, it's got a commentary of Chuck Chuck Russell. It's got Friday Nights in the Cinema Fam, Cinema Family, little interview sort of Q and A thing. And it's got a little booklet, which has you know, equally kind of lame cover art, which is trying to be like the Criterion Collection, but failing. But yeah, this is the only Twilight Time Blu-ray I'm ever buying. It cost me 35 bucks. Was it worth it? Eh. You know, because I know it's going to be rare. It's only it's limited to 5,000 copies. But, um, I only got it because I had money to burn. And if I didn't have money to burn, I wouldn't have even bothered. But, um, I'm glad I have it, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, I still, I still don't approve of Twilight Time's bullshit. I really don't. I don't approve of their limited to 5,000 units crap. I don't know, I don't know if you can see that. Limited to 5,000 units bullshit. I can't because it probably blurred it out. Uh, but anyway, still gotta have it. And sometime I will review this. So look forward to that long in depth retrospective on the Blob remake, which is one of my favorite films. So yeah, so those are those blue, my blue, recent Blu-rays. Um, and here's a few DVDs that I picked up. Con Air. This is just regular old DVD, not Blu-ray or anything, but it doesn't have any features anyway. The the original, the director's cut. Uh, didn't have the film on DVD, so I decided to pick it up on DVD. Plus, it was the 3 for 10 thing where I got three movies for 10 bucks. Actually, I got this one Murder, Murder Set Pieces. Mainly only got it because it was at the pawn shop, at the resale store where I can buy three movies and get them for 10 bucks. And then I also got season one of The Chappelle Show in the same deal. Hilarious show. Great show. And then the last few other stuff I got, I got this from Goodwill, Innocent Blood, John Landis film, underrated, really unique take on the vampire genre. And then I got these two DVDs at Bymart. Got this for five bucks for for uh, it was actually it was actually yeah it was four ninety nine but I got it like a dollar off, so I got this for like four dollars. A Legend of Billie Jean. Which has a commentary track with Helen Slater and Yardley Smith. Mill Creek Entertainment. And then I got a DVD of one of my favorite films, Mouse Hunt. 
I, I really do enjoy this movie. I grew up with this film. I saw this in the theater with one of my relatives when it came out. I, I think it's hilarious. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really fun, zany slapstick comedy. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for the DVD, Blu-ray, VHS, uh, autograph, Laserdisc, CED update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. More to come uh, when I get uh, the package from my friend. And uh, also the, the Blu-ray from Arrow, Arrow Video. I also did order the RoboCop book, The Definitive History of RoboCop. I did order that, and that's on its way. So I'll, I'll probably do a video showing that. And speaking of books, I might just show you guys one last thing. One last book that I don't think I ever showed you guys. Which, um, if you're a fan of this series, this is definitely a must own. I got this for like 20 bucks. Really good deal. Phantasm Exhumed. This is definitely something that I would definitely recommend if you're a fan of the Phantasm films. Or if you're a fan of just horror films in genre, get a hold of this book. I mean, it goes really in depth. It talks about all the Phantasm movies. It's got pictures and everything. It even talks about the new one. So, yeah. So, if you're a big fan of Phantasm, check this out. And speaking of that, I think I might do a horror book uh, video because uh, for Halloween. It's something different. I think it's pretty cool. I got I got a lot of cool horror books. And I'm, I think I might, I'm thinking I'm going to do that. So, stay tuned for that video. And thank you for watching this update. And I will see you guys later. See ya.